This episode of Thinking Tackle is in association with Daiwa Tournament ISO Reels. Welcome to the final show in this series of Thinking Tackle and we really have saved a fantastic venue and a fantastic guest for the final show. We're at Frimley Pit 3 which is on the Surrey Hampshire border and we've got Ian Russell from Heathrow Bait Services fishing with us. Now I fished Frimley Pit 3 a few years ago, I did a whole summer on here and it's one of those sort of venues that's like something out of a Rod Hutchinson book. You've got patches of lilies, you've got islands coming out of the water, turning into bars, running down the lake. There's overhanging trees, you've got silt, you've got gravel, there's so much to fish to. I'm fishing in a swim called the Fallen Tree. I've basically just dropped in next to Ian, and really we're here to pick Ian's brains. There's so much that he knows about carp fishing, and he doesn't only do big fish fishing. He'll fish for 10 pounders or 40 pounders. And before we actually got here, he came over to the lake to prime the swim and to get a feel for the place, because he's not been here for a year, and he caught the lake's biggest resident called Charlie's Mate at 42 pound. So we're really looking forward to to a fantastic session. We're going to get over to Ian Swim now and start picking his brains. For any of you who have not seen any of the carp fishing magazines or Crime Watch UK, uh, this is Ian Russell. Oh, Dan, Thank right. you very much for coming, mate. You're welcome, mate. Um, you're in a very famous swim. I know this swim quite well myself as yeah, well. Yeah, I know you do. Um, but there's lots to fish to out there, isn't there? Lots to fish to. Uh, so many different features, three rods really wouldn't be enough. No. But you've got to try and pick which is the best on the yeah. day for your free rods and your yeah, yeah. So first of all, what, what's made you choose this swim to do the filming in? The fact that we've got a couple of days to string together is yeah. the first one, because it's fairly central. And, and having fished for a while now, as you did, a lot of the fish, no matter on conditions, they'll end up here at some stage in a couple of days. We have got time on our side, which yeah. is an unusual situation for both of us. Yeah. So I've chosen this to lay a bit of bait, and you can play a bit of a waiting game in this area. So. Mm. I think people don't appreciate what it's like having a couple of cameras following you about and it, lim it does limit what it you limits can do, you. Yeah, it? you can't be running about with, with five guys uh, and moving swims stealthily no. like so, it, you know, for, for the purpose of this, it is better to base camp, hmm. put a bit of bait out and then you, you know, fish more effectively, didn't you? So Yeah, yeah. So what, what, what bits have you chosen to fish out there? The main area, I've gone for three different areas. Uh, the, the most obvious one is an island at about 75, 80 yards drops off the island down to about 10 foot into a silty gully and then up again on a bar. Well, I've chose the gully. If, again, you knew any, any lake, an island is a feature, it's yep. a margin, so they're up and down it all the time. So yep. if fish visit an area, they're going to coast along the edge of that and a, and a little area of a bait down there is going to get visited sooner or later. Right. Sooner, hopefully, rather than right. later. Now, you, that's the one thing that you've sort of, you've done automatically that other people might not think about. You said you're fishing the gully. Yes. Now, most people go straight for the dong 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 of the gravel, don't well, they? Well, I don't. I mean, I fish a lot of uh, sort of day ticket, heavily pressured venues. And most people, including the mags, push it for pull the float up on the gravel, 50 baits, and you're on it. Yep. The, other than the fact that most people do that, most of your food ends up at the bottom of the gravel. Yep. In the, most of your natural food's in the silt. Yep. And most of the food that you and I put out there, if it's boiled, rolls down the gravel yeah, yeah, yeah. into the gully. So I yep. don't want a bait presented two foot up a gravel bar. You know, if the fish do come along, they'll concentrate there. I don't want my bait up here above them. You want yeah. bites as fast as you can get them and get on it. So I tend to stay away from gravel on a lot of lakes, and it makes sense the back of a bar or the front of a bar, your bait's going to run up down there, Dan. So, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. it's a natural larder anyway, isn't it? Like, yeah, sure. And the other two rods, are they, are they fished in the well, off the end of well? Well, off the end of the island, you've got probably a 10 or 15 yard gap, a quite a deep area, about 12 there, and it's quite silty, and then pads. Pads are another natural draw. Yep. So there's a line there between the pads, you've got the, the island is sunken there at the back of it, so you're almost bottlenecking fish into it. Right. So I've put a spotted area out there on the silt as well. Um, because it's away from the gravel, it's near, I've seen fish, 
it's an area I've took multiple catches off, so yep. I know they get there. And again, visually, you'd fish it because yes. of the, you know the pads alone are a draw. Yeah. Island the other side, you've got a wall of gravel that side. You know, it's, it is. It's a V. They're going to get in there. Yeah. And the, the bit that you just touched on there as well, you've fished it before and you've had bites from there before. Yeah. A lot of people want an instant. This is where I should fish. You know, and it's like, right. you know, if you if you fish a spot and you don't get a, get a bite from it, you try another spot, and then once you've had a bite from there, you know you can go back in there and do That's it again. Right. Yeah. And I think this is the thing. A lot of these, we can't show that the lapse of time that's no, involved in it's, learning. It's, can we? I've done trips here. I've done forty-eight hour trips here, and I haven't had anything. Yeah. You know, but you know they're there. It's down to you then to work out what's yeah. going on. It's all part of fish. Why we love doing it. Yeah. You know, but I've also done uh, forty-hour trips there and done. 12 to 15 fish right you know when it's gone right sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah. it does sometimes it's, again it's why we go fishing yeah, yeah. so it's a that is probably the safest area for taking this swim to my knowledge so right. for my confidence anyway so. sure Sure. Although it hasn't worked yet, but well, it did work. It, was it Friday? It did work. Yeah, yeah, saying that it was an opportunist thing. Friday, the lake hasn't fished well for possibly a month now. It's been very, very high pressure, and they've been they've been dancing it, not not behaving correctly. Anyway, I got here Friday, and for two hours they did start doing the Frimley thing, where they jump in and leaping. So I, I wired up a zig rod, put it out there, started on on brown foam, which I always do on venues, yeah. silhouette it, it doesn't frighten a lot of fish off, bright usually does, it's curiosity catches them, the eye, but sometimes they shy off it. Yeah. Anyway, I started with brown foam, had a take straight away and bounced the fish. Um, an hour later, put it back out, an hour later they were still jumping, so I know they're jumping around the bait, they're not taking it to something wrong, even though it's a suspended bit right. of foam to be fair. Yeah, yeah. Changed to black, made it a little <clears> bit less conspicuous, opened the safety side of it. Another hour, nothing, and they're still there, so I pulled it in and put yellow, blatant. Right. 20 minutes, whizzed off, and for me, I mean, it's, it's phenomenal. <laughs> I haven't been here for a year, and my last, my last fish over 30 pounds from this lake was Charlie at 41. Which was a year ago. It was just over a year ago, right. yeah. Because that's a good thing to sort of point out, that people think we're having 30 pounds every no, week. No, no, that that's my first, in England, that's my first 30 pound fish, a fish over 30 pounds in a year, and it was the same fish. Right. The last time it was 41.12, I think, and... It, it turned out to be Charlie's mate on a, yeah. on a little lightweight zig rod, 42.12. So nice. you don't choose repeat captures, but when they come like that, yeah, yeah, you yeah. ain't going to grumble about them, are you? So, no, not but, at all. Uh, with the bite, end of display, and I ain't seen nothing jump. You know, that's a day and a half ago now. But I, I still look at it. Fish. The weather has just started to change. It's getting better. Spots of rain, I think, in the bivvies. Finish off the cup of tea, and then we'll have a look at those zig rigs. We certainly will. Cheers, Cheers then. So we're going to talk zig rigs now. Um, this was the one that landed Charlie's mate. It was it? mate. I've very set up for it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so talk us through first of all the hooking arrangement, size and type of hook. It's a mugger, size 12. Uh, nice little curved hook. It, it sort of bites. You know, yep. it's got a grabbing effect to it because you, the fish aren't going to inspect this. They're passing the bait and they just lean over and get it. It's, it's yep. almost a predatory thing. So smallness of the hook, yeah, sharp and the smallness because it keeps it's buoyant. We don't want it. A heavy yeah, hook so will gradually, a heavy hook will gradually, yes. will gradually just sink. Just keep the hook link down, yeah. Yeah, and a little tiny bit of yellow foam, flavoured or not? No, just whatever make it is, you know, it's yeah. like a sort of cigarette shaped foam, you chop bits off it, so. Cool, okay, and the hook link, what type of material is that? It's £10, it's, t it's a £10 nylon, like pre-stretched nylon. This is 10 because it's quite weedy here. Yeah. When I do it at Oxford, uh, on the, where there's no weed, the water's a bit clear, you can get away with eight. Eight is my favourite. Right, and what, why lighter for people that have not done this before? Because uh, it's visual. It's yeah. coming straight up. You know, right. it's, in their, it's in their world, isn't it? So yeah. the lighter you can get, I know people that use seven pound double strength. You know, I, I haven't gone that low because I haven't felt necessary, but um, yeah, yeah. eight in clear, in, in clear water with no weed, but obviously when you've got your weed, it's less important with the weed because it's sitting up amongst the weed, so yeah, it's yeah. less visual, yeah. but you want the strength. Yeah, there's no point getting the, the, the bite weed. if you're going to snap off, never, is it? Never, ever fish where right. you're going to lose it. It's no point. You can't boast about lost fish. Yes. Yeah, sure. uh, and length? What, how how length. long is that one? I've done a lot of zig fishing this year uh, and learnt from it, and what, the major thing I have learnt is play me swim, set it the same as you would normally, and I would always start at two thirds up. So right. there's always a band, a different band they're swimming at, and I've found the majority of the time a zig will work at two thirds up, whether you're right. spotting on it or not. If you haven't had a take within, I don't know, if, you, if it's obviously fish there, and you haven't had a take in half hour, a foot up. I'd always come up to the surface first, because there's right. less space to go right. before you start pulling her down again. So. Right, okay. And do you have more than one rod on a zig, or do you just chuck, chuck one no, out to start I, I, off I with? would, if I'm sort of tutorialing or in a match situation, I would place a zig either side of a marker float, set my spot to it, and have two. Start one a foot lower than the other, and one a different colour than the other. 
Right. Okay. On Oxford, because uh, I'm spotting pellet, sloppy pellet on it, brown catches most fish, which is why I started on brown here, because right. it's the one I got most confident in. Yellow gets avoided, uh, maybe because of fear factor, I don't know. But right. Yellow works here in the end, so. The thing I've sort of picked up from what you're saying, though, is you're thinking underwater. You're thinking... You're working. Pellets dropping through the water, yes. so I'll have brown on. Yep. Because brown's what's dropping yeah, through the water. it's a safety thing yeah. as well, isn't it? You know, they're, they're, they're picking up these brown objects that are, that are semi-buoyant. Right. So why would they be frightened of a brown piece of foam? Like, you know, which exactly. is what it is, effectively, Dan, you know? Yeah. Perfect. And, and lead arrangement? Lead arrangement. I mean, it makes sense to... Uh, again, here, I've got this... On Oxford, where, where the water's clear, there's very, very little weed. I use a small inline. Right. Because you don't want this pendulum swinging that. about when you're playing a fish. Right. Here, again, I've put this lightly pushed on lead loss system, safety system. Yep. I want the lead to come off on the take. Right, you know, okay. Then you've got your fish. When I hooked the fish the other night, the lead came off and the fish stayed on the surface all the way in, which I didn't know it was a big fish, just as well it stayed on the surface, because there is a lot of weed out here, so yeah, yeah, yeah. it worked. You know, so again, again, it's a thought process. It's thinking about what's, no, it's not what's done out blindly. there. Yeah. Little in line, if it's clear as a bell and there's yeah. no weed, because you don't want that lead flying That's around what, like no. that. And then when it's weedy, fish for the lead to come off on yep. the take. And that fish is straight up on Safety the Safety in mind, isn't it? Excellent stuff. Well, uh, well, one more question actually on it. When would you put out a zig rig? You know, today we've left our baits on the bottom. Yep. Would you put a zig rig out now? Um, no, because I've seen nothing out there. Right. If okay. I if I thought there was fish in the area that were mooching and not visiting the bottom, I wouldn't hesitate. I'd put them all out there because right. you, you're here to catch fish at the end of the right, day. Okay. We've seen nothing. Uh, to give us a reason to do it, so no, why do it if, it's, if you don't think it's necessary? Right. So keep it visual all the time, yeah. keep looking, yeah, just and then work, if they're, if they're moving way. around, yeah. get a zig out there. Yeah, at the end of the day, you're here to catch fish, as I say, so Pucker. work it. Excellent. <sighs> Gutted about having them rods too far out last night, you know, I think that was the cause of the liners. Could have been, mate. A few in the area, weren't there? So, mm. wise choice to uh, rest the area, though. Yeah, yeah, bring them in for a few hours. Yeah. I used to do that when I was doing nights on here. I not not fishing the day when you don't think you're going to catch yeah. one, you know? Just put a bit of food out and disappear for a couple of hours like, with the lines. Tell yeah. you what, mate, when I fished it, I never even bothered with up here. Most people don't. Nice secluded little bay, but as you say, well, most people just don't get down here, Dan. No, Damo had a few out of here. Yeah. He was fishing it. Looks very carpy though, doesn't it? Well, because most people don't bother, I think the fish feel, you know, you get, you've always got a few residents, uh, albeit usually the smaller ones, but it doesn't matter. We, you know, we need to catch a fish. So yeah, yeah. if we stick a few baits, a couple of little spots here with the oak well, tomorrow lunchtime, maybe when it's quiet, you know, if it, whatever, but quieter, we can get down here, stick a couple of rods into a couple of hours, mm. can't we? So chance, isn't it? Yeah. So how much would you put in, mate? I'm going to put half a dozen pouches on two different spots here, Dan, so we can whiz up tomorrow lunchtime. A couple of hours fishing, who knows? More of a chance than where we are, I think, at that time of day, like, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, it definitely seems to be more of a night area, doesn't it, out in open water there? Yeah. You know, any, with any lake, the little snaggy corners gives you a chance really, realistically any time, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. So, as soon as the lake is off full, we might as well nip up here lunchtime, a couple of rods, sling them out, a couple of hours fishing. And who would knows? you put any bait out? Tomorrow, if we come up and do that, yeah, would you would you do this again before starting fishing or not? No, I'm not gonna. Um, I'll put half a dozen on each ones now, and then a bag tomorrow. Bag under the overhang, bag off the bush. You know, they'd have, hopefully there'd be fish there. They've ate it, uh, and you only want a bite, don't you? We're not yeah. going to be in here all day. We want we want to nick one fish, and then get back to the rods, get back to the main swims, like so. Yeah, it's a good little point, really, because a lot of people do sit in one swim for the two or three days. Don't catch anything, go home. No, or, you, it's, know. you know, at the end of the day, we've said it before in this, we are fishing, and the purpose of being here is to catch a fish, so you've got to maximise your chances. Yeah. If you can, you know, it's a luxury. Some waters, you haven't got this, you can have a wander about, uh, and bait little corners. A lot of lakes have, but people don't take advantage of it. But um, I feel it's the right way. I think tomorrow lunchtime we might get a chance. We won't know if we don't try it, to be fair, right, are we? That one's going just along that tree line. Just along there, the tree it? line. I mean, I've walked it a lot. I've, I've never actually fished this swim, to be fair, but I have walked it and looked, and you usually get a good few fish hanging about in here, albeit a tent of the smaller ones. Don't know why. Right, you can see them at the back of the tree there, yeah, can you, if you have yeah. a look in there? And right. a nice warm day. There was a load there yesterday. Oh, was there? Yeah, there was a oh, load right. in there yesterday afternoon, mate. So, um, because they're there all the time, there's no need to come in in the morning and put another load of bait out. Right. Just a bag. 
a little boily on the end and um, hopefully, you know, pull one out. Just give him a taster today yeah. and come back and snare one tomorrow. Hopefully, that's the plan. I think that'll do us, mate. Right. That'll be enough here. Get back to the main swims. Come on. Well, just as I'd said, it doesn't look like it's going to happen, and it has happened. Uh, right hand rod's roared off. Just uh, same rod as went during the night. I had a 21 and a half, about half three in the morning. And uh, that was on a little 12 mil bloodworm dumbbell, just a bottom bait on a very short hook link, the soft hybrid hook link, one that's coming out towards the end of this year that I've been testing all summer. Um, and the shocker rig, which is an inline running on a leader. And uh, away it's gone. What I did during the night uh, was swap two rods onto the dumbbells. Uh, I had two on plastic corn and one on a dumbbell. And as soon as the dumbbell rod went, I thought I'll put two rods with that same bait on. And, uh, it looks like I did the right thing. Doesn't feel particularly massive, this fish, but he's banging his head a lot. We'll do the honours, uh, Mr. Russell. When I got up this morning, uh, Ian was pacing around behind his rods, ready to move, because he hadn't had a bite. And uh, we're going to give it to about 10 o'clock, I think, aren't we? Yeah, and 10 then... o'clock. <coughs> We'll go looking, mate. And go up and... Uh, it's just not happening where I am, is it? The fish no. are further down the lake, so we'll do something about it this morning. Hopefully. Oh, not ready yet. Keep them away from the other lines. Yeah, we'll get them in the morning. Gotcha! Oh, Pucker! Excellent. <laughs> well done, man. Cheers, mate. And there she is, 25 pounds of Frimley Common. This is the average size of fish in here. They've grown a bit since I fished it. Low to 30s in here as well. Over 30, 30s, 20 of them are commons as well. So if you want to catch a 30 pound common, get on the CMEX website and have a look at some details for Frimley Pit 3. You can day fish it and night fish it on two different tickets. And uh, we've got another night to go, so you never know, we might get involved with one of those 30s. So I'll we'll get this fella back, and then we're going to talk spod mixes. We're going to talk bait now, um, and looking in uh, Mr Russell's spod mix, it's not dissimilar to my own, which I'm quite pleased about, mate. Yeah, actually. I know, but they're all very similar, aren't they? <laughs> so talk us through what's in it then. Um, same as you, I've got the ready prepared plastic tubed particles, this is the, the mixed particles, not Part, the hemp. The party mix they call it, Yeah, the they? party mix, yeah. The aniseed one. one. That's it, because yep. uh, it's got lots of different, different bits. The whole idea of this, as with you, is to, is to feed them but add confusion. You know, you're not, they're not going to know what to pick up, what not to pick up, what's going to be on the rig. Yep. So lots of different sizes and shapes. So is it, there's a couple of tubes of that gone in, a uh, couple of tins of sweet corn, and lots of my little tiny Boilies, like you know, yeah, so the stench ones. Right? Yeah, it just makes it a little bit more different than other people. Like where else I saw you put tins of tuna, my tuna content is, is the small fish meals. So right, there's tuna know. actually in the bait. Yes, yeah, right, flake well, tuna in the bait. Okay, well we'll talk about we'll talk about the bait itself in a minute. But what I'm sure everybody wants to know is when you come to somewhere like Frimley, you're going to do a couple of nights. Yeah. How much do you put in to start off with? Frimley's uh, different than a lot of venues we fished. It's, just, it's a very prolific lake, and it, when yep. they're on and when they're having it, there's, there's a lot of fish to feed there. Yep. I would normally, if I'm turning up cold, I've just decided out of the blue to go to Frimley, I haven't yep. pre-baited, I would turn up, I'd probably turn up at first light, look around like you would, find your spots, fish with bags for the first couple of hours. Yep. Once you've, you're happy, the fish have sort of slow, because the daytimes on here are probably the slowest period. So then I'd select my areas, quite happily put 5k, I'm talking not this time of year, because it's starting to chill out a bit, in the spring, 5k on each rod uh, of 
mixed right. everything. And would you have three rods spread on three different spots? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I right. mean, if one starts kicking off, obviously you're the same as me, you'll, woof, you'll make the most of one area while it's happening. So you'll move a second rod yeah, into that area? Yeah, of course you will. You've got to right. on it and get as many bites as, as that window allows you to get. Yeah. So I'd quite happily, out, look, just say I bring a 10k bucket, there'd be another one in the vehicle. Right, okay. And I'd quite happily put the whole bucket out to start with, that would be yep. your first 24 hours. Right. And, um, you know, see what evolves from that. Right, okay. And if you've had fish, do you put more in after each bite on this sort of place, or do you wait until the next on day? On this or? one, I've found uh, you can't get away with it. That yep. They are scared of it. You know, I have had bites not long after spotting the initial spot. Yes. But when, when the fish are there, I, t I think it frightens them off. I've done it a lot of times and tried it. Now I don't. It's not even worth it. I'll yeah, wait yeah. now. Whatever's going to come within that night and morning, you know, that period, I'll, I'll, I'll accept what's happening. Just The only top-up I'll do would be a bag. Right. Know, connected to, to your rig. Yeah. Um, and when, when, the, when the action slows or stops and, and you come in to readdress your tackle and rigs at sort of lunchtime, yep. then I quite happily see what's going on. Another 5k, mate. Right. There's a lot of fish to feed, aren't they? There and is, they do. There when is. they're on your ear, Dan, it can be hard and fast. Yeah. Like, you know. I made the mistake of that when I first started fishing here that normally my way of doing it is once you've had a bite, three more spud falls, same accurately as, on same top. As, yeah. You know, but I found on here it, it scared them, you know, yeah, and then you didn't get mate. another bite all night. Yeah. If you bait it up heavier to start off with and left it for the whole night, you yeah. could get a few more bites. The only thing I found that, uh, that I, you can get away with on the closer in spots is that is in not spots, these little tiny, which I wasn't yeah. using when I'd done a lot of time on it, to be fair, it was 10 millers, but to put a couple of pouches of the little boilies, yep. you know, it's less of a disturbance, it's almost like maggot fishing, you know, you yep. can spray a few maggots and, and keep them interested, yeah. there's not a lot of disturbance there, that's the only way I've found uh, of, you can you can prolong it, like, you know, right. you can keep them in the swim a little bit longer, but right. drop a spot on the surface and... My, yeah. you know, my experience is the same as yours, they're gone. Yeah, definitely. I mean, just to sort of show you mine, I don't want to teach your granny how to suck eggs. No, 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 no. Um, um, they are very, very similar. Just put them, them two well, together. Well, yours, my boilie content is, is whole because they're tiny. Yours is flaked. It's chopped it, up, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, just you know, the they're, they're as near as damn at the same, aren't I they? put a load of salt and chilli in mine. Yeah. Do you, do you put any in yours I or not? I put chilli in this because I'm using tuna boilies. Uh, you know, right. the salt content, again, in mine will be within the fish meal boilies. Right, okay. So, you know, Different, but the same. To yeah, be fair, definitely. And they, you know. they both work, don't they? Cool, both, yeah. both with a fair bit of corn in. Yeah. I, I, I find as well, if you're if you're fishing a little bit of yellow yeah. on the end, it's nice to have a few little specks of it in yeah, your mix. Yeah, you need well, it. Isn't it? it. For us, we need it, and they probably don't, to be yeah. fair. But we need it for your confidence, isn't it? You exactly. know, I, I generally fish with uh, you know a bait like that on the on the rig with a, with a tiny bit of yellow yeah, plastic. Open, open your hand, up, and so that is it. it. So like that. So you've you know, got that, almost that basically on the hair. Yeah. Yeah, so you're feeding over the top yeah, what they're feeding. You've got on, that basically. laying out there with lots of flashes of, of yellow and, and brown in it, so you know, they're picking up what's already laying there, aren't they? There should be no suspicion. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And when you were baiting up when you fished it a lot, you were putting bait in, weren't you? Now, how much were you putting in and and, and when were you doing it? But what I was doing when I was pre baiting in, in the week, because I am a weekender and I yep. can get here Friday lunchtime ish and stay till Sunday evening if you know if that if that's work allows. So, so on my pre baiting I would come I didn't put any spot out. Because right. that would, it's too much work in an evening for me to get over after the factory. Yep. So I was using 10 mils. Right. Now, the, the, the two swims I selected to do it in, I was very lucky in the areas I fished. There was absolutely maximum range with a catapult with 10 mils. Right. All three spots, different skyline markers. So I would tip up on a Tuesday evening, 7 o'clock in the evening, 5 kilos between three rods. Just spread them right. evenly. Uh, I'll do it again Thursday evening. As long right. as there was no one in the swim. If there was yep. a day angler in the swim, I'd sit back, walk around the lake, come up when they've gone, which could be half ten at night, but yep. you've still got to do it. You know, It's not the dumb thing, is it, to be feeding right, no, right over it. the top of someone fishing or no. even near someone no, fishing? I think I'd have been asking for a, a clump or two. <laughs> yeah. like, you know, but, yeah. but so I would put five kilos in between three areas on, on, a, on a Tuesday. Yep. I'd put five kilos again on a Thursday. Yep. I'd turn up Friday at lunchtime, bags for a couple of hours, and then do my spot mix, because I'm here for right. the weekend then, so yep. I put a bit of different, you know, it was only ease to use the boilies instead of the spot. Yeah, you sure. Know? So I wanted to be sure. on and off and gone home lot, you know, so. Yeah. Well, I think that, that's interesting in that you, you've got a limitless supply of bait because you run a bait firm, yeah. yet you're not piling that much in. Five kilo over three spots is not a massive no. amount of bait, and it's just keeping it, keeping it going in. I've keeping been to some venues, uh, and it, you know we've got away with doing ten kilos on a rod net, but it's not necessary here. You know, I've I had enough action in the small period I fished it to be to be extremely happy with what went on. Like you yeah, know, sure, so sure. we didn't overdo it, yet we didn't underdo it. Yeah, you know, so the uh, perfect. We may have got basically. more with more bait, but I was happy. 
Good. You know, I think we got it right. So excellent. All right. Well, that's that's the bait covered. We'll, we'll talk rigs later on in the show. Um, I'm sure you'll be itching to get stalking at some point. Yeah, well, I'd so. like to still get down that little bay at the top. You know, yeah. it, it's quietened down here now. The fizzing it's it stopped. So I think we should nip off down there, mate, and have a look. Excellent. Well, there's one out of the blue. I was just considering reeling in and moving up the end bay where we put a little bit of bait yesterday, and this has roared off. Very relieving, I've got to tell you. Mate, was you that unconfident? You uh, haven't even set your net up. I, I, I that... broke it down to go stalking, you know I have. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> not that bad, son. Not that, that bad, mate. <laughs> there she is, mate. Oh, nice. It is a relief, isn't it, mate, to be oh. fair, you know. I know we do this, but, uh, and we do manage to bag a few, but when it's not happening, going in your favour, just to get the bite. Yeah. There's a couple of different planets have lifted off your shoulders, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, because you know how it can fish, and when it's oh. not fishing like it, you, it's, you think it, it's not a reflection of what you're doing, but, no, it's but not, you're not doing you worry that it is, don't yeah. you? Because you, know? you do, that's why you go fishing, isn't it? You're always, you know, you're in fear of doing something wrong. Because it is a fine line, success and failure in this. You know, uh, and to have you on the left of me bagging two this morning, and um, the fish showing to your left, I, you know, I'm convinced I'll be moving anyway, but yeah. we'll see, we'll see, you know. Thing, and, you know, how often it happens in fishing, it all changes on a coin, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, we were saying earlier on when we first got up, weren't we, that, you know, we've so, so many big fish in this lake, you know, fully scaled, oh, over mate. 35 pounds, two commons over 40. Yeah. It, the difference between a terrible session and a brilliant one is one bite. It's one bite, it? which is a, a billy second, doesn't it? You yeah. Know, which is off like, you know. Yeah, we always used to say, the other syndicate, only takes a second. Yeah, and it does, mate, you know. The, you know, the, the, the fishery is off full. Um, it's not, you know, it's not uh, showing its true form. It, you can get so many fish here. It's, it's full of so many nice carp, which is why we've come here. Um, but there you go. We've, we've got a couple. You know what I mean? Yeah. So now we, we, we're talking about bait. Um, when would you consider putting some more bait into that area then? Um, this evening, mate. Yeah. Same, basically, you sort of follow the same routine, really. You know, I, I've been here a lot. And, it, and unless something really adverse, the conditions change so bad, you know, you, it works. You know, what you need is that little switch with the fish in it. Yeah. So, you know, after this, I'll still go and do me a bit of stalking at the end there. Right, OK. Put a bit of bait out about four, the same as yourself, put the lines in a little bit later and the fish will do the rest like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it bodes well for the last night, definitely. I'm yeah. well confident of getting oh, a few more. Oh, mate. Well, that's, you know, I was going to move to your left because you've had two fish. When it's fishing sticky like this, two fish in the morning's good. Yeah. You know, so um, we'll see now. Maybe I won't have to move then. That'll be played by ear, won't it? Yeah. Net's a nice colour, that, isn't it? It's very hard yeah. to see in the water. By <laughs> well, you or the fish? <laughs> <laughs> I think both. But you do start doubting what you're doing, which is silly, really. But it is. Because we've done it for so long, you've got a <laughs> lifetime behind you. Yeah. But you want to. You want to. But you can't help it, mate. You want to prove what you're talking about is right. Yeah, don't it's you? fishing, you know. Come on, baby. Here we go, mate. Gotcha. And we have one. Nice. Excellent. Little dumpy common. Well done, son. God, here's a weight. <laughs> Pressure's cool. all. Imagine the... that getting back out of the net as we turn around. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Dan. Cheers, thanks, Dan. <laughs> oh, you're one. Another 20, mate. That is. Nice, mate. Little lumpy back one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pucker. There you go, 21 and a half pounds. Massive relief that one. <coughs> I've had to wait for it though, it's fishing a bit sticky. We're gonna, I was gonna go off stalking just before I caught this as it happens. Uh, watching, I've got one remaining rod in the swim now. Lots and lots of bubbling, fizzing going over the top of it. A few line bites, so I'm gonna give it possibly an hour before uh, pulling that one in and going on a wander. Till then, nice to get one. Massive relief as I say. And that is almost exactly half the size of the one I had three days ago. When your luck's in, I suppose, isn't it? Well, there you go. Hopes to start or something to be better. I'm going to slip her back. There you go.
Oh, mate, it's not going to work. Just get me out there, all right? Yeah. No, feels, feels good, doesn't it? Just feels good. It's a shiny carpet down here. Just looking quite cool, isn't it? Right in or just on the edge? The left one, I've put probably a metre off the bank. Yeah. Uh, it went, per it couldn't have gone better. Yeah. It couldn't have gone better. <laughs> and this one, I've just underarmed by the bush, but where we baited yesterday, basically. Is it so quite silty because of all these trees or not? It went down. I mean, bear in mind, I've never fished this swim. That right end rod, I, you would imagine it, I mean, look at it shallowish you know yeah, murky yeah. water it went down i'd guess about eight foot and it really did bonk, it bonked down quite hard that one that one landed quite shallow which i'm also pleased about you've got two different things going on yeah, haven't yeah, you? Yeah. So, nice but very confident mate who knows we will just try it, so. yeah it's, it's turning the worst part of the day the best part of the yeah, day if you is, get one, uh, as soon as you walk into a little tiny bit like this your enthusiasm is yeah you know it's it's fishy there's going to be fish in here even if the residents you know you, whether you get ones down to you but yeah. straight away you're back on it again and you're buzzing yeah yeah well, i've wound in now i've put about another half a bucket out yeah. over that one spot well, what i've done on the left hand rod is i've spotted to the same distance cool, but yeah. round to the left and uh, i've just chucked the marker out there felt it down it's that it's that hard silt you know yeah. it's not really mucky but it's not gravel. It's not the stony bits. No, it's yeah. not the stony bits. So it's the same bottom as where I'd have my bites from. Cool, mate. So Because we'd seen fish down that way, hadn't we? Yeah. Um, I thought I'll leave two on where I've had the bites and put one down that way. Makes sense, mate. You're and not uh, crowding then either, Dan, exactly. are you? You know, you're not crowding. And you've got another, you know, another option, another chance. Yeah. If you get another two area. spots going, then you can try and get bites off both of them. Right? Yeah. So, well, that's it. If you, you know, if you get two takes on that one, another, the same clip, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. So you haven't got to mess about the floats straight on it yeah i think it makes brilliant sense mate mm. a lot of people miss things like that you know and, and you shouldn't you know mm. it's about angling isn't it definitely it's all about fishing mate definitely right we'll sit here and be stealthy and see if it occurs yeah. Yeah. fingers crossed mate fingers crossed but well, i've given it a couple of hours the temperatures dropped considerably with me sitting in the shade here and that's enough for me it doesn't feel as fishy now uh back to the main swim now put a bit of spot out settle down for the evening I'm off. And there she is, 21 and a half pounds of fantastic Frimley common carp. They really are bars of gold, this fish. So I'm going to get this one back and I'm going to show you the rig I called it on. It's the Shocker rig with a little tiny short hook link. And we're going to go over to Ian's swim as well and look at his rigs. So I'm dying to see what he uses and he is known as the pop-up master so we're going to have a look through his little bag of pop-ups and all his special hook baits and see what he's using. We're going to talk rigs now and uh, Ian and I have not fished together before we've seen each other at shows loads of yeah. times and you sort of know that you both catch fish but it's, yeah. it's always nice to see exactly what you are doing yeah, so yeah. talk us through that one from the hook bait first I notice you've, you've got the corn round the other way to how I fish it what, why are you doing it like that? Take an handful of sweet corn Throw it on the edge, yeah. and it'll tell you why. All the cool lays flat. Tiny little percentage that I use in my fishing, get as many percentages on your side as you can, and yep. you're laughing. So I use it that way. I flatten it down, same as the rest in, right. in the area, like, you know. Right, and then a, a, a 10 mil stench, is that? It is a stench, yeah. On there. Um, about five mil sort of hair to the hook, and yep. your silicone's right the way round. Why is it so far round? It adds to the twisting effectiveness of the, of the rig light, you know. Right. So let's show that on, on my hand there. You're talking about when the hook link's tightened, yeah. that happens. I mean, everything does. If you hold it out there, you know, even, even this little curved bit, it's, you know, it's almost a half circle. Yeah. Which when, when dragged over something, it's going to flip. It's going to flip. Yeah. Yeah, very effective. Very effective indeed. So we put that one back down again there. You've got a little bit um, down from the hook. It's a coated hook link, isn't it? But you've yeah. got a little bit of stripped away. Um, how much of that and why do you do it? About half an inch after the tubing. Right. Again, flexibility. It, you know, it allows... So right. A lot of this plastic stuff is quite stiff and the hook doesn't turn as, as, as effectively. Yeah. So to strip that back, again, gives you a turning. It's right. all about that hook flipping over right. with movement in the fish's mouth. Cool. Now, the hook links there, reasonably short, five, six inch hook link, yeah. something like that. Um, why have you chosen that link? The area I'm fishing is quite silty. Yeah. So I do like the hook link to bury in a bit. Right, your okay. food sinking. I've, I've, I've tried it on, on silty lakes that are, the fish are visible, yeah. and I've, I've lengthened the hook link, and you lose every time. You're giving right. them rope to hang themselves with, they get off them. So right. for me, you know, it made sense to me, from what I've observed anyway, and those I've fished with, four to six inches on the silty lakes, 
That's, that's right. very that's interesting it. because most people use a very long hook yes. link and you've yeah. said you've seen fish with the long hook links, pick yeah. them up and get away with them. But then so. you and I are very lucky in the fact that we've been able to observe fish. A lot of people yeah. aren't in that position like, yeah, you know, yeah, or yeah. don't put themselves in that position. So right. from my observations, shorten it down is far right. more efficient. And you put a little bag of, of baits on, probably sort of that many if we can put roll those yep. up to the hook bait. Um, is that a given? Do you do that all yeah. the time? All their natural food is small. I try and keep everything in my armoury small. Right. Um, tiny little mouthful that is. You know, big bags don't work for me. You've got three or four mouthfuls for, for a carp then. Give them a chance to suss you out. Yep. I want a carp to come in and pick that up. There's one little group there and you're away. Yeah. In theory, you're away. Yeah. You know, no, I know, very, I know very, very similar time, to... But, to what I do, but it's interesting to see you doing it with the, with the little tiny boilies. It's mm. definitely different from what most yeah. people would do. And then going on to, obviously, that's the bottom bait presentation. Yep. That's your pop-up one, which has got swivels and beads yeah. and all that it's sort of thing. It's a variation of the 360 rig. Um, when it's first come out, before it hit the mags, it, it's used by most with a, a little swivel with a, with a flexi ring. Yep. I come off that, the safety aspect of it for us was, I saw so many people using this, don't shake the fish down, Get the fish down at the bottom there before they lift it. That swivel catches in the mesh, and I've seen it lots. Tears the fish's mouth. So, right. tiny little bit of safety aspect, which is why this is not a swivel, but it's yep. a bit of a shrink tubing. All right, it's retained the curvature and it works. This, when, when mouthed, spins no matter where that fish touches the hook from. Hence the, the 360. She'll come so round to meet it. So the hook's basically as you as you touch the back of that. Yeah. The hook is turning into the fish's mouth. Yep. So as it goes to mouth the bait, the hook's bang, flipping yeah. round into it. It's almost like a it. trigger, isn't it? It's coming round to get it. Yeah, right. And that, that bead there, is that glued or is that...? No, that moves. Uh, no need to glue it. It's at the top of the hook, isn't it? Right, so it's not going to move any further nope. around the hook. No. Nope. Um, it's a long curve shank hook, a size 6, is that one? It's a 6, yeah. 6 I've right. found to be the best. And then one of your pineapple pop-ups, Yeah, is a little 14 miller. Right. And that stands up like that off the bottom? Yes. Now, if you compare that, you know, I was just going to sort of bring my rigs in as a comparison. If you compare the two of those, like that, my one is much, much closer to the lake bed. Yep. I'm paranoid about them being that far off the lake yeah. bed, so should I be? No, I don't think so. No? no, I don't think so. But again, it's personal, isn't it? I can't get that that close to the bottom because of the name for the rig. Yeah, sure. But I'm quite happy with that. I'm, I'm, in fact, if I threw out one pop-up rig forever, it would be that one. Such is my confidence in that set right. right. And two bits of that on there, We'll hold that up just as nice, and I wouldn't right. mind betting you'll try it. Right, no, I will do, mate. I will yeah. do, definitely, definitely. One little thing I think I can add to your fishing is the running setup. That's what I call the shocker rig. When I was yep. fishing on here for that season, I did really well on this rig, yep. and we, I didn't know exactly why, but when we filmed the underwater films, you could see it. As the fish picked the bait up, rather yep. than you, where you've got a leg clip on there, on a slack line, which obviously we're not yeah. fishing at the moment, but on a slack line, the fish was able to pick the rig up, yeah. Shake its head around, and with the lead swinging underneath its jaw, it actually threw the hook out of yeah. its mouth. Yeah. You know, so by having it running for a, for a, a, a period, yeah, I mean, a little bit of freedom that, on the lead, that will end up hitting that those beads, which will slide off if the yeah. line snaps. But as that fish shakes its head, the lead starts running away from it, and it doesn't yeah. know what to do about Panic it. Panic mode you know? again, isn't it? It's yeah. just a, a new, a relatively new, and very underused setup, which yeah. I'll try myself, having watched you use it this trip. Very interesting, isn't it, mate? Yeah. So, it's, a, it's, a, it's a new slant on an old idea. Yeah, isn't yeah it? it's the old bulk rig, isn't it? As, yeah. as well as, you know, for different reasons. Yeah. Now, you're, you're known for your pop ups and your special yeah. hook baits and all that sort of thing. So, <coughs> let's have a look at those. Little hook baits. I mean, I always, just a tiny little bit again, this hook bait we talked about on here, I've always got it soaking in some type of dip. Yep. But if I've got a thousand of these little beauties laying about, I want to have something to single my one out as quickly as possible. Right. So we, we do, you know, we do sell these and they're always in, in fluid of some description, but that, you know, it, it's that signal, it pulls, it's, the it's a draw. Yeah, that one. it's a draw to one, you know, all, all the dips we use float, so they're right. coming up, so any, any depth the fish is coming through the area, it should be able to pinpoint that right. one if it, if, if it wants to. For right. sake. But and show us a couple of your other little specials as well. The little pineapple pop-ups we've done forever. Right. Which is on this one. My favourite, most people's favourite, is pineapple, isn't it? Yeah. It's bright, you know, it catches fish, fish doesn't it? Yeah. Know. And a new little thing we've done is this. It's again along the yeah, range of, some of, those of little so tiny baits again. Right. You know, these have gone down a storm with matchmen, but these are also come in our armoury. You know, the smaller the bait again. Bag yeah. of pellet, two of them. You know, yeah. bites all day long, really. Yeah. You know, it is confidence. It's it confidence is. in the tub is what you're buying. Yeah. Well, I hope this gives people confidence to use smaller baits. Yes. Because I'm yes. sure it'll get them more bites. Yeah. Um, Without and, a doubt. And you never know, mate. We've got a little while left to go. Well, we certainly have. We could have. bag a couple. Who knows? We? Hope so.
There you go, nice 21 and a half. Half past one this morning. I will point out we're allowed to sack them just purely for this trip, obviously, because of the, uh, the program. So, Sam X, thank you very much for allowing us to do that. I'm going to slip him back a bit quickly this one because we've got lots of uh, activity over the Bacon area. And who knows? Chance for another one yet. Nice, mate. Ooh. Hey, nice. <laughs> Been watching the fizzing on that one for a while, and uh, it's never, you're never certain Rolled it's going to happen. It? But yeah, it did roar. You know, you're never certain it's going to happen, but it's a, you couldn't get more of a chance than when they're no. popping and fizzing like that. So nice. Like a better one. Yeah, it does. Is it? The better, I mean, it might not be because it's fishing, isn't it? But the better ones tend to do a lot of it on the surface, and this one was immediately on the surface. Right. So you just, you never know, dear. They fight so hard in here, Dan, don't they? They do. You just don't want to give up. We're saying, chance. wouldn't we, that it, it should happen because the weather's turned, oh. it's gone low pressure, a little yeah. bit of drizzle, it looks right. It looks perfect late now, doesn't it? Yeah, uh, I've not had a bleep. Really? Then again, well, you had one during the night, haven't you, so... Yeah. What's this? Is this on the pop-up that you put out, or is this the bottom no, bait? No, no, this is the same uh, presentation as yesterday. 10 mil boily and a, a little bit of plastic light, you know. It does so well for me on here, Dan. Like, you know, it does so well for, for all of us everywhere. It's yeah, yeah, it? it does. Small food items, and then just that little bit flash of colour with the corn as well. There she is. Lovely. Odds on it's a common, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> One proper solid there, mate. Thing is, if it's tall and they've gone at the bottom of it. Yeah. Well, we've got time, mate, haven't we? We've got time. There's no need to uh, rush him. I ain't got to be off till 12. It's all right, mate. <laughs> I've got a couple of hours yet, then, haven't we? It's always very nerve-wracking, though, because, oh, you know, yeah. I've seen them do this when, when it's visual on them, and they can shake that up very quickly. Yeah. It's always very nervy, mate, and it looks like a nice fish, so... At this particular moment in time, it's turned from elation... <laughs> to dread. Yeah! Don't look. Come yeah, she's on. on! She's moving again. Woo! <laughs> Back on elation at the moment, <laughs> yeah. It's carp it fishing, horrid, though, mate. It's horrid, though, isn't it, Dan? Take that chance. That's carp fishing. You wait so long for a bite, and yeah. um, to have to, you know, push the odds. Yeah, it is carp fishing, isn't it? It's why we do it, mate. That, that, you know, when that fish moved, your heart's bouncing again, isn't it? Mm. Oh, well, we're, it is indeed a common. Which is what Frimley's famous for, mate. That must have been high up in that weed. As soon as that popped then, it was on yeah. the surface, wasn't it? Mm. I don't know what smells worse, this silt or me. Oh, well, I tried in it last night with that fish, and I think you'll get off the hook by saying it is the silt, mate. Come on. Yes! Gotcha! That's a nice fish, Put it mate, there, son. It? That's a good fish, mate. Excellent. Yes, come <laughs> on. <laughs> She's a good man, It might be a 3 0 common, mate. It looks, uh, it's a good fish. How about that, eh? 31.6. Well chuffed, mate. Good skills, son. Good skills. Look Brilliant. at that. Brilliant. Wicked. A fantastic end to a fantastic show. Loved it, mate. Yeah. Fantastic. It's been good, isn't it? It's been good. Absolutely it's been wonderful. good. I was going to say that uh, we've got unfinished business and we've got to come back and do it again, but I think you've uh, put pay to that, mate. We'll this have to go somewhere it, else yeah. next year. This does it, mate, doesn't it? So this is what you're here for, isn't it? These, yeah. these nice big commons. So. And they're there £10 pound bigger than this in here. There's two £10 pound bigger there than this. There is two £10 pound bigger, mate, yeah. yeah. What a result. Good angling, mate. Superb. Good angling. Well, that is the end of Thinking Tackle for this series. What a fantastic end it's been to a fantastic series. Join us next year. There's going to be loads more venues to fish, loads more guests, and loads more big ones just like this one.
chance to see more of the underwater footage shown in this series, check out the state-of-the-art underwater carp fishing series, available from all good tackle shops. This episode of Thinking Tackle is in association with Daiwa Tournament ISO Reels.